I'm going to start a little bit uh, further back than unitization. Uh, I'm going to start with a, a drilling unit because uh, we, that's where we start. We start with a drilling unit, which really is a, a three-dimensional box where a well bore can legally be put. And so, uh, if, uh, for example, if we set up a Bakken drilling unit, that means that uh, the rocks from 50 feet above the upper shale to 50 feet below the lower shale and inside of two square miles are, are a legal place for them to drill that well. So it might be like this table, like this tabletop, okay? And then we, as regulators, stop out at that rig twice a week while it's drilling the horizontal lateral to make sure it stays inside that box. Once production's established there, we set up what's called a spacing unit. We space that thing. We look at the, at the production rate and we say, well, uh, you know, one well there could well, theoretically over, you know, 80 or 90 years drain that spacing unit, but we'll allow additional wells inside that spacing unit. But once we set up that spacing unit, then everybody's minerals in there get pooled based on how many acres they own. So if you divide your net mineral acres, acres by 1,280, that, that pools you with everybody else. Now, unitization is something else again. Now we come back and we say, well, we are going to move oil from one spacing unit to another by injecting water or carbon dioxide or something like that. And in that case, now we need to, a contract between these spacing units that says, doesn't matter if your well injects or produces or what it does, you all share in every barrel that comes out of that 